my sex of me work from some sector in the general market. During the last sector of general science, we have discussed uh, some information regarding the natural resource that is land. Okay? Now, our chapter next, natural resources, air, water and land, out of which we have already studied the two natural resources that is air and water. And we also uh, take the information regarding the natural resources some information regarding natural resources that is land. Today, we are going to learn more information about natural resources that is land. During last lecture, we discussed about the questions which are given on page number 5. Okay, and I also told you that land is not even everywhere. What is meant by even land or flat land it is it is similar all the places. But we know that uh, everywhere the land, I mean, sometimes there is mountains or hilly areas also there, sometimes there are some pits also there, okay, means the area of land is not even everywhere, it consists of pits, then some hilly areas and some plain regions also. Okay, means land, when you observe the land, everywhere it is not even, so sometimes in area is also there, and sometimes there are some pits are also there. Okay, so land is in the form of stones, soil, big rocks, okay, etc. Now, you know that all the terrestrial animals, including human beings, are lived on the land. Some animals making the burrow also downside. For example, we take the example of snakes, some uh, rabbits, then rats. These are uh, leaves below the ground by making the burrows. Okay, that is the habitat of these animals. And we also use the land for farming or agricultural purposes. Okay, so therefore land is very important to us for, from forest and from plants and animals which are present on the land. Uh, we get some means important things from there. Okay, let us see exactly what land is made up of. Some information also we studied during the last lecture. But today, I give you detailed information how the uh, land is formed and which are the different layers of the land. Now, on page number 6, okay, 1.8, figure is given. Now, when you see the figure of this diagram, now, here, the different layers you have seen. Now first one, for example, this is a plant which is grown in the upper surface of the layers. There are different layers of the soil or land, namely humus layer or fertile layer of the soil. Then next one is soil, then immature soil, layers of soil and small rocks and lastly the bed rocks. Okay, these are the different layers of the uh, land. Okay, now first you observe, now here the plant is grown in the uppermost part of the land. Now first one, first layer of the land is known as humus. What is mean by humus? Humus is made up of some remains of the plants and animals. For example, when the plant, uh, animal dies, at that time they get buried inside the soil or underground and the remnant of that animal is changes into humus which is the fertile part of the soil which consists of many nutrients then you know that when the plant becomes old the branches or the leaves of that plant they uh, become dried and that matter is also get buried underground and it also form the humus means you keep in mind humus is the fertile layer or topmost fertile layer which consists of many nutrients okay so it is the topmost layer of the soil is called humus humus is very important for the growth of the plants now below that there is a blackish color layer is seen in the diagram it is of soil soil consists of small rock particles sand and soil particles okay it is in this part of the land the small creatures like worms, you know that earthworm is also there, some insects are lived in the layer of the soil. Then next to that, there is a layer of immature soil. In immature soil, 
there are some particles of bed rocks some soil particles and some stones are seen okay now up to the first three layer that is humus soil and immature soil the plant grows now you know that the roots of the plants are comes in the third part of the soil that is called as immature soil now below this third part there is a layer of soil and small rocks now in this layer the amount of soil goes on decreasing and the stone particles or rock particles goes on increasing means there is small amount of soil is present in this layer and large amount of stones and rock particles are seen in this layer and the last part of the layers it is called as bed rocks now bed rocks means it is completely covered by the rocks stones or big stones of the rocks in this the content of soil is very in less amount okay so in this bed rocks it is from the uh, bed rock we are able to know the texture texture means what quality of the soil and uh, which plants can be grown and color of the soil is also uh, determined with the help of bed rocks understand so these are the different layers of the land we discuss in detail okay now the next part or next point of the chapter is the process of soil formation means how the soil form now you know that i also told you yesterday that to make 1 kg of soil we require at least 1000 years okay means formation of soil is very uh, slow process and in that 1000 years are required to prepare 1 kg of soil understand so soil of the land is formed by the natural process how it takes place we see in the details okay the abiotic components now you know that soil consists of two types of components okay first one is biotic components and second one is abiotic components now how the soil is formed firstly we discuss about the abiotic components now how soil is formed okay abiotic components and biotic components what is mean by abiotic component means the soil in which the there are some non living things okay they are called as abiotic component and the the components which are made from the living thing is comes in the category of biotic components okay so these are the two types of component present in the soil the abiotic component of the soil are supplied to the withering of bed rock for example how this process start formation of soil for example this is the rock or big rock in there what happens first now due to heat cold and water now when there is a sunlight is there that sunlight is fall on this rocks understand this is one type of, of rock okay in that sunlight falls down then second one is cold waves that is air air also air also struck to the rocks and third one is water okay means due to the rain that water falls on the rocks okay these are the three processes means heat from the sun then wind from the air and or coldness from the air and uh, rain okay water from the rain so the, from these all three components the withering process start okay so that withering is for the the crack is developed in the rock so it is divided into two or three parts okay so withering means it is converted or changed into two or three parts so cracks are developed in between the rock means whole rock is get distributed into further smaller smaller and smaller particles or smaller and smaller stones due to withering process means this type of withering goes on increasing and from that the rock is changed into many large stones understand now due to heat cold and water of the sun wind and rain respectively the bed rock breaks down into pieces so withering process means what that rock complete rock is break down into 
small uh, means a bigger toes and then smaller and smaller toes. Okay. How this process occurs? You do rail, then hit and hold positions on the rock. Okay. So the way rock break down into pieces, stone, sand, and soil are formed from these pieces. So ultimately, as the years progresses, these big stones or big stones or big parts of the rocks are changes into smaller and small, smaller and smaller particles, and finally they changes into soil. Understand? Now, apart from these microbes, they worms and insects also found among the rocks. Now in the when the cracks are there, you know that in the cracks ants are also present. Then scorpion is also present in the uh, cracks which are developed. Then small insects are also there, microbes are also there. So such type of insects are found in that cracks, okay, or with the rocks. Rodents like mice and rats are also found here. So small rodent animals like mice and rats are also found in these cracks. So the roots of the tree growing on the land also here the with the rocks process. Now you know that like for example, uh, on this area, nearby area, the trees are grown. So that the roots of the trees are passes or it goes on the cracks which are developed with the rocks. Understand? So when the plant grows near to the rocks, the roots of the plants get penetrated into the into that particular part or into the cracks, and due to which the rock get separated. Okay, so roots of the tree growing on the land also helps with the help of the rock. The process of soil formation is slow and continuous. So, the formation of soil is continuous process. Means the formation of soil takes place continuously as a withering process of the rocks, and it may take thousands of years to manufacture or to produce the one kilogram of soil. Now, soil can get destroyed. Now, you know that when there is heavy rain. And uh, they will that soil particle. Uh, we see that upper most part, that is fertile part, is very important to uh, plants. So that part is get destroyed due to flood. Okay, flood, then storms and human activities such as mining process. Okay, due to which the soil get destroyed. So to protect the fertile layer of the soil, what we should do? We should plant some more. Uh, we should plant more and more trees. Okay, so due to plantation, what will happen? For example, this is the uh, soil surface or fertile soil. Now, when the plant grows, what will happen? These are the soil particles below. Okay, so these particles now, these plants develop rock, uh, soil roots, and these roots due to these roots, the these soil particles touch or sticks to the roots, and these roots. What is the function of the root? Roots hold the Small particles of the soil very firmly, due to which when there is a heavy rainfall or flood is also there, at that time also these soil particles remain intact or attached to the uh, roots of the plant. Understand? Now, so when we plant the trees, more and more trees, we prevent the erosion of land. Now, this is the first time you heard this word. What is meant by erosion? Erosion means what? It is the process. During which the fertile layer of the soil is uh, destroyed, okay, get destroyed due to natural conditions and uh, flood or storms, okay. Due to flood and storm, the upper most fertile layer get destroyed, and then the land becomes uh, bare, and in that land there is no plantation of trees is possible or growth of the plant is not possible. So it is called as erosion. So when whenever we plant more and more trees at that time, we prevent the erosion process and we, uh, we protect the soil. Okay, understand? That is why it is necessary to conserve the soil and prevent the erosion of the land. The best remedy for this to increase the green cover. Green cover means what? We should grow more and more trees. Uh, then the land changes into green color. Okay. So green cover of the land. Erosion of the land is reduced. Grass, trees, and bushes are growing. Means when we grow more and more plants on the land, we should minimize the soil erosion and we protect the fertile layer of the soil. Okay. Now, do you know humus is the layer formed on the soil due to the decomposition of dead plants and animals by microbes? Now you know that how the humus is formed. 
humus is placed at the top of layer fertile layer of the soil in that when the animals get diet buried into the soil as well as when the plants become dry the dried leaves are also get buried into the soil and in that small microorganisms are there these small microorganisms feeds on that uh, dead part of the plants as well as animals and they convert or they mix the valuable nutrients which are present in the dead part of the plant and animal and after that that soil becomes fertile in short in that the important constituent like nitrogen phosphorus potassium that is released from the dead animal it get mixed into the soil and that soil again becomes fertile due to humus okay means what what is humus the dead or remaining part of plants and animals which get buried into the ground and that changes into the nutrients or changes into the humus by microorganisms humus supply nutrient to the soil humus is also important for aerating the soil so due to the humus the oxygen is absorbed into the soil and that soil uh, in that soil there is more amount of oxygen in there and it is important for the growth of the plant when roots get put penetrate into that fertile soil they absorb the oxygen from it okay so aeration process is also important the proportion of the humus in the upper layer of the good fertile soil is about 33 to 50% so when there is a good quality of soil is there how much amount of humus is present in that soil 33 to 50% okay use your brain power what is the constituent of soil classify them as biotic and non biotic constituent so which are the biotic constituent of the soil sand then soil particles okay so these are the biotic components and biotic components humus humus is made from the living thing right? therefore it is a biotic component humus then nutrients okay these are the biotic components which are present in the soil okay forest on the land got buried underground due to the great upheaval of took place on the earth many ages ago after that the process of formation of fossil fuel from the remains of living thing took place underground now you know that before so many years the dinosaurs were found on the land but ultimately the dinosaur get killed and they got buried underground from which the remains of from these animals there is a production of fossil fuels which takes place underground from that fossil fuels we made petrol diesel kerosene paraffin etc such type of material this material is called as crude oil okay crude oil means for the fossil fuel which are which is produced underground with the help of remnant or remaining material of the huge animals which were found in the past understand now living thing use land water and air available on the earth so does the man however the portion of these resources that are actually put the use very small as compared to the whole earth look at the fallen table what table is given now we have studied in this chapter the three important natural resources that is air from air what we get oxygen we get okay now second important uh, resource is water we get water and third one is land from means land is also important for the growth of terrestrial animals now you know that 29% of our whole earth is by land then water how much water is present for drinking purpose 0.3% we also said that point and oxygen amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is 21% you know that nitrogen is present is 78% and oxygen is present 21% Okay, so these three important factors: oxygen, which is important for the respiration of living organisms; water is important for living organisms; and land is important resource. Okay, so even in this small proportion, the resources shown in the above table are sufficient for all living things. Now you know that the drinking water is available only zero point three percent, but for living things, all the population. Which is present on the earth surface is depends on this much amount of water and uh, 
Uh, the all organisms fulfill their needs from this much amount of water. Only it is very necessary for man to control his grip in other words he must use these resources judiciously means must, we must take care we should use these resources very carefully because the sources of these resources are limited on the earth surface okay with the argument that they are being for all other living things and not just for the mankind we also consider that these resources are not only useful for only human beings but also useful for other living organisms which are present on the earth surface Okay, and the last topic is to do our work. Okay, now you might have heard the department known as Indian Meteorological Department. Now that was established in 1875 for studying the weather in the Indian subcontinent. Now you might have seen in the news channel the weather report is also given. Means there is a map of our country and the various important cities. For example, Delhi, Kolkata, then Mumbai. Okay, Chennai, then Nagpur. So, important cities, the temperature or the maximum and minimum temperature uh, information is given in that weather report. Okay, so that report, who gives that report to the uh, broadcasters, Indian Meteorological Department. Okay, the main function of this institute is to observe the weather and make weather forecast. So, they give the information uh, sometimes means. You know that in some places there is a flooding, flood, then sometimes there is a rain. So the forecast or the weather condition is given by the Indian Meteorological Department so that all the states get alert from that institute. Okay? This institute also conducts the research related to change in the weather, make the forecast about rains and study the development related to the global warming. So different geometrical conditions are uh, the rain or flood, all the weather reports are given by the Indian Meteorological Department okay, to the broadcast of our new channel. Understand? So, in this chapter, we learn all the important natural resources air, water and land. Okay? You learn this chapter carefully at home. Okay? Thank you.